when did you get the uh, vintage car? 1972. Uh, it's been here since before you were born. It's not really a car picture. The car is just a symbol of part of Walt. Walt sort of is the Gran Torino. He's worked on him in the factory, and he's as antique as they are. <laughs> Yo, now that's a nice car. Hell yeah. 1972, Gran Torino. Fastback. Yo, Cobra jet engine. Hey, yo, man, it's still in condition. Most kids are interested in cars when they grow up, and, and, and in Kate Wall's case, he's always interested in cars because he was in that business. It's his pride. It's um, his, I guess, last standing thing he could uh, claim and be proud of because uh, he made the car himself and he, he loves it. He put the steering column in that vehicle and he's, it's his prized possession. He allowed himself one beautiful thing. One of my favorite scenes in this movie is uh, the scene where Walt is polishing the Gran Torino and he goes up on the porch and he sits down and he has a beer as the sun's setting. It's sweet. I think that's a moment that so many men can relate to, is just that feeling of satisfaction of, you know, owning the car that you, you love and taking care of it and shining it up and having it out there for people to see. Most of the cars that I liked growing up were all 30s cars because they weren't making cars during the war. So the 40s cars were really in demand. My first car was a 32 Chevy Coupe. It was all rusted out and it cost $25. And I was a kid and uh, that was my first car. When I was younger, I, I, you know, I had quite a few different cars. I don't know really if I had any dream cars. I just usually looked for something that was fast. I didn't really care what it was, you know. I've always been kind of into, into fast cars. My dad always had cool convertibles, and I always loved them. And they were big. It was either a Lincoln or a Caddy. I always thought when I grow up, I want an Eldorado Cadillac like my dad, you know. I never got one. The 72 Gran Torino that we have in this uh, movie is particularly familiar to me. I mean, I was growing up in high school, I had a 72 Cutlass, and I had a friend who had a, a 72 Gran Torino, so, so that's where I developed a real love of cars, especially cars from this era. Owning a car is like a rite of passage for most men. They, they are able to buy something, or maybe they're handed down something from their parents, or maybe they work and they, and they buy something, and go out there and express themselves with it. This is me. This is what I am. This is how I want the world to interpret my personality. The first time I had my own car, um, that was a very proud moment for me, I'm not gonna lie. I think every adolescent goes through that feeling of attaining freedom when you finally get your wheels, you know, and you can leave the nest and you can go out with your buddies. And, uh, and then more importantly, eventually, pick up girls and take them away from their homes and on dates. If he doesn't ask you out, I'm gonna ask you out. He beat you to it. Really? They're taking the bus. <laughs> no, you can't take the bus. Gotta get you something more stylish than that. How about that? The Gran Torino? Yeah. You'd let me take the Gran Torino? I think that men love cars because the better their car looks, the more manly they feel. Like, you know, they can get girls easier, I guess. Not true. Performance cars, fast cars, sports cars, muscle cars, they all speak to our own personalities. And uh, guys would tend to want to choose the car that they uh, feel would express themselves the best. The Grand Serena, I think, would match Walt's personality kind of like to a T. It's kind of, uh, you know, it's got that to it. So, I mean, you can't get more testosterone out of a car than uh, like a Grand Torino. Most men appreciate cars on a, on a very deep level. They can appreciate them for their performance, for their, for their looks, for how they make them feel when they're behind the wheel. When you're young, you like cars with a lot of, a lot of flash, convertibles, that kind of thing. And when you're older, you like cars that are, have a lot of iron around them, in case you pile it up. My dream car now, you know, it would be a, one of the early 70s muscle cars, probably not a Grand Torino, but it'd be uh, like a big block uh, you know, GM car. My dream car would be a 365 GTP Ferrari or a Daytona Spider. A Corvette, a black Corvette. I, I don't know why, but I like black. Porsche 911, that's me. Maybe a 95 
um, Buick Park Ave, the Supercharger. I would love to uh, be driving a, an old 68 Fastback Mustang, like Queen drove in Bullet, because that was one of my favorite movies, and I love that car. Maybe an Aston Martin, as long as somebody else is paying for the oil changes and the, the dings on the bumpers, because I hear an oil change is like $700, so I think my love affair would end there. When I go through midlife crisis, uh, I'll probably buy a Viper, <laughs> uh, but uh, we'll see, you know, hopefully I'll never go through midlife crisis. <laughs> Clint's a, Clint's a car guy. He likes cars. He uh, knows a lot about cars. He's probably a better mechanic than uh, most people would think. You know, if there's something goes wrong with a car on the set or something, he's, uh, he's the first to come and analyze it, and he's usually pretty good at it. The problem with getting cars for our business is there's two ways to go. The, the collectors don't want to get their cars dirty, and the, the guys that just rent the cars to you are mostly uh, you know, pretty rough cars. So it's, you're trying to find that fine line. Especially with Clint, he doesn't like anything that looks like it was a, you know, a restoration or a classic car. He wants, he wants it to look like it was supposed to look at the time. So uh, yeah, it's a, quite a search, and you usually go to swap meets and stuff like that to find that stuff. Uh, this car was owned by a, a, a classic car uh, broker that had a bunch of cars. That I, we, we just found it on the internet in an uh, old Ford Trader magazine. Clint really liked it. The color was fine, and uh, it, it runs great. The interior was great, so we were uh, pretty lucky and brought it to, to Michigan. And uh, when we finished, uh, we were talking about selling it there locally so we didn't have to haul it all the way back to California. And then as the movie progressed and we all became rather fond of the, of the car, uh, I, I discussed it with Glenn again. I said, maybe we, you want to keep this thing or you want to send it back? And he says, yeah, let's, let's hold on to this car. He says, it's been done right by us. So let's see what happens. To a lot of people, cars are just a means of transportation. They, they get in them and they, they drive around to where they need to go. Um, but for a lot of other people, uh, a certain subset of society, they're, they're folks that really treasure their car. I work in the Ford factory for 50 years, and he's out selling Japanese cars. You made cars? Yeah. I put the steering column in this uh, Grand Torino in 1972. Generationally and culturally, uh, Walt and Tao are able to bond um, when they're talking about the car, when they're talking about something other than their immediate relationship, and that's really kind of where they, they find that connection. Walt knows he's got to help Tao, or wants to help Tao, and so it, the way he helps him is the only way he knows. He's not attending him to college. He's not to try to teach him philosophy or how to turn the other cheek or any of that stuff. He just shows him what he knows. Well, you are, you are a pussy, you know? You want to hang out with guys like that? What was your initiation supposed to be? Uh, my Gran Torino? Christ, old Friday. Part of Walt giving Tal that car is not giving it to his sons, because they never, they didn't earn it, and he did, he definitely earned it. He says to him, he says, you're my friend, you've come a long way. And so it stands there as a, uh, the, a, the thing that brings Tal and Walt together. It involves a lot with both of the characters. I mean, the Grand Final might win an Oscar too.